the concept of gene. Genes are the physical and functional units of heredity capable of expressing themselves by generating RNA and proteins through template activity, genetic transcription and genetic translation. The sum total of the genes of a cell is known as genome. The sum total of the genes of a cell is known as genome. Genes are customarily regarded as the functional biological units which design development, control metabolism, govern heredity, generate mutations and produce heritable variations. So in brief, they are the molecules which govern the morphological, anatomical, physiological, behavioral, reproductive and developmental aspects of organisms. Then Mendelian concepts of genes, first major topic. The elucidation of the concept of genes, in fact, goes back to Mendel. While explaining the results of his hybridization experiments, Mendel used the term hereditary factor to denote the agent responsible for the transmission and expression of hereditary traits. From his studies, Mendel could derive three inferences or generalizations which can be best regarded as the base as basic concepts about genes. They can be summarized as follows. Hereditary factors exist in pairs in individual organisms, but gametes have only one member of each pair. Some factors are dominant and others recessive with respect to each other. Dominant factors express themselves always, whereas recessive factors remain suppressed in the presence of their dominant counterparts. In other words, they are expressed only in the absence of their dominant counterparts. So during gametogenesis, the companion factors of each pair separate our, out independently by segregation and in the next generation, they come into pairing with new partners, recombination happening. In 1903, Sutton and Bowery put forward the chromosome theory of heredity and established that hereditary factors are located in chromosomes and so chromosomes are the physical basis of heredity. In 1909, Wilhelm Johnson coined the term gene to designate the hereditary factor responsible for the transmission and expression of biological characters without any reference to its physical nature. Convincing evidence in support of the chromosome theory of heredity were provided by Thomas Hunt Morgan and his associates during the 22nd and 3rd decades of the 20th century second and third decades of the 20th century. In 1911, Morgan revealed that genes are located on chromosomes and are physically linked together. In 1944, Oswald Avery and his colleagues proved that DNA is a genetic material. Since then, gene has been exclusively studied, minutely analyzed and differentially defined. Now, some classical concepts of gene. The concepts about gene formulated before the birth of molecular genetics are often described as classical concepts. Their major generalizations are as follows, like genes are independent, self-duplicating hereditary units that determine the physical features, physiological properties, and behavioral aspects of organisms. Genes are the ultimate units of function, and they act and express themselves through the production of proteins. Genes are the fundamental units of recombination, mutation, and variation. They can undergo spontaneous changes, causing marked phenotypic alterations. Then genes are the units of hereditary transmission and they can be transmitted from one generation to the next without considerable changes in them. Genes have linear and non-overlapping agreement and arrangement in the genetic points of chromosomes or loci of chromosomes just as the beads on a string. A single chromosome contains hundreds of thousands of genes. A single gene may exist in two or more alternative forms known as alleles which occur in pairs. Most genes have only two alleles, dominant and recessive, but some may have multiple alleles. Two or more genes often interact to produce a single effect interaction of genes. The classical concepts of genes appear to swing around two major concepts, namely genes are linear and non-overlapping particular units positioned in specific chromosomal loci and genes function, recombine and mutate as independent units. Then classification of genes based on Mendelian inheritance. Based on Mendelian inheritance, genes are classified into several kinds such as dominant genes, recessive genes, partially dominant genes, co-dominant genes, carrier genes, sex-linked genes, sex-linked genes and sex-limited genes along with sex-controlled genes and so on. So dominant genes are the genes which can express phenotypically with when their alleles are in the homozygous and heterozygous condition. 
recessive genes are genes which can express phenotypically only when their alleles are in the homozygous condition then partially dominant or semi dominant genes the genes whose dominant alleles are only partially or incompletely expressed in the heterozygous condition so the phenotype of the heterozygotes will be intermediate between those of dominant homozygotes and recessive homozygotes then codominant genes the genes whose dominant and recessive alleles are equally and fully expressed in the heterozygote the genes whose dominant and recessive alleles are equally and fully expressed in the heterozygote then sex linked genes the somatic or non sexual genes located in sex chromosomes linked with sex determining genes then sex limited genes the genes though present in both the sexes are expressed only in one and repressed on the other they are located in both autosomes and sex chromosomes so that is sex limited genes then sex control genes influenced or conditioned type of genes the autosomal or sex linked genes whose dominance and repression are controlled by the sex of the organism in which they are present then carrier genes the recessive genes which in the heterozygous condition we have as carriers of heritable traits and then express in a subsequent generation in which they exist in the homozygous condition so what are carrier genes once again the recessive genes which in the heterozygous condition behave as carriers of heritable traits and then express in subsequent generation in which they exist in the homozygous condition so these are carrier genes then classification of genes based on the nature of their action in prokaryotes genes are mostly mendelian in that they are exclusively dominant or recessive but in eukaryotes there are various types of gene expression based on this genes are often classified into several kinds such as lethal genes pleiotropic genes complementary genes complementary genes and supplementary genes along with that duplicate genes inhibitory genes masking genes polymeric genes epistatic genes collaboratory or coepistatic genes then cumulative or addictive genes and so on first lethal genes the mutant gene whose expression produces harmful alleles and often lead to the death of the organism then pleiotropic genes the genes whose expression produces several different and unrelated effects the genes whose expression produces several different and unrelated effects that's pleiotropic genes then complementary genes the non allelic genes which express together complementing each other and produce a phenotype which neither of them produce independently that is complementary gene then supplementary genes the genes which supplement the action of basic genes and thereby modify the expression of the later to produce altered phenotypes the genes which supplement the action of basic genes and thereby modify the expression of the later to produce altered phenotypes then duplicate genes identical genes then inhibitory genes the genes whose dominant alleles does not produce any phenotypic effect but simply inhibit the expression of the dominant allele of other genes then masking genes the genes whose phenotypic expressions masks or shields the expression of other genes then polymeric genes the different genes which govern one and the same phenotype then epistatic genes the genes which suppress the expression of other non allelic genes then hypostatic genes the genes whose expression is suppressed by other gene controlling the same trait collaboratory or coepistatic genes the genes which are located at different loci control the same trait assert independently and interact to produce a new phenotype which any one of them cannot produce individually 
So collaboratory or co-epistatic genes are the genes which are located at different loci, control the same trait, assort independently and interact to produce a new phenotype which any of them cannot, any one of them cannot produce individually. Then cumulative genes. Cumulative genes are addictive genes or polygenes. A group of genes which act together, supplementing each other to produce a quantitative or addictive effect in the phenotype. Then modified genes, the genes which interact with the genes of other loser and quantitatively modify their phenotypic expression. Then supplementary, complementary, epistatic and inhibitory genes. These are modifier genes. Then constitutive genes are housekeeping genes. The constantly active genes whose products are needed always. So their expression occurs constantly and continuously as an essential routine part of the normal life process. Then luxury genes or smart genes. The genes which govern specialized functions instead of household functions and are expressed either in specialized cells or in response to specific stimuli. Their products are formed in large amounts only in specialized cell types. The hemoglobin gene and the immunoglobulin genes of vertebrates are examples. Hemoglobin is synthesized only in red blood cells and immunoglobulins are synthesized only in plasma cells. Then classification genes based on their role in mutation. Mutable genes, the genes which exhibit higher rate of frequency of mutation than mutator genes, the genes which can enhance the rate of frequency of the natural mutations of other genes in the same genome. Then anti-mutator genes, the genes which can lower the rate of natural mutations of the other genes in the same genome. Then modern concepts of genes, fast strides in molecular biology have thoroughly revolutionized the concepts about genes. The basic tenets of the current concepts of genes are the following. Genes are complement, I'm sorry, genes are complex hereditary determiners or the molecular units of heredity composed of short stretches of nucleic acid. Hence, they are not particular, particular units but are nucleotide sequences which contain the coded information necessary for all biological functions. So functionally, four different kinds of genes can be recognized, namely structural genes, ribosomal RNA genes, tRNA genes and regulator genes. Structural genes code for mRNA and proteins. Ribosomal RNA genes code for rRNA and tRNA genes code for tRNA. Regulator genes regulate the functioning of other kinds of genes. In fact, they are modified structural genes which code for mRNA and some regulator proteins. The nucleotide sequence of a gene specifies the amino acid sequence of a particular phenotypic polypeptide or protein. In other words, there is strict collinearity. Collinearity is the direct sequential correspondence between the components of DNA, mRNA and protein between the nucleotide sequences of a gene and the amino acid sequences of a corresponding protein. Genes are mostly sequential and non-overlapping, so adjacent genes are well demarcated from each other. Genes are non-overlapping. Then genes are not the units of physiological function, recombination or mutation, but there are only functional attributes of genes. So it is now held that genes have the basic attributes of physiological function, recombination, mutation, complementation, replication and transcription. To specify these attributes, genes are termed cistrons, reckons, mutons, complements, replicants and transcriptons. Each of this represents only a small stretch of DNA. In some cases, like in bacteria, some closely associated genes behave as a single functional unit known as operon. An operon governs the production of the enzymes of a metabolic pathway. It may include four kinds of genes, namely structural genes, operator genes, regulator genes and promoter genes. So structural genes code for an enzyme. Operator genes controls the structural gene through activation or inhibition. Regulator genes control the functioning of the operator gene through the production of a repressor protein. Promoter gene in initiates the transcription of the structural gene. Then cistron. Cistron by Seymour Benz in 1950. 
seven is a fundamental genic unit which governs the synthesis of a polypeptide chain or protein molecule. Nowadays, the term cistrone is used as a synonym of gene. A DNA molecule contains many cistrons. The mRNA of eukaryotic, eukaryotes is monocystronic, while that of prokaryotic, prokaryotes is polycystronic. A cistron in turn has several functional units called codons. Each codon codes for a specific amino acid. It is formed of a set of three nucleotides and hence called triplet codon. Cistron is a functional genic unit which governs the synthesis of a polypeptide chain or protein molecule. Nowadays, the term cistron is used as a synonym of gene. The DNA molecule contains many cistrons. The mRNA of eukaryotes is monocystronic, while that of prokaryotes is polycystronic. A cistron in turn has several functional units called codons. Each codon codes for a specific amino acid. It is formed of a set of three nucleotides and hence called triplet codon. Next, reckon. Reckon. Benson in 1958 is a small genetic unit capable of recombination. Nowadays, the term recon is very seldom used, but it's important. It may be formed of one or more nucleated pairs. It is exchangeable but not divisible by genetic recombination. Capable of recombination, and a system may contain several reckons. Nowadays, the term recon is very rarely used. Then muton, muton by Benson 1957 is a basic unit of gene mutation. In other words, it is a small unit of DNA which can be altered in the formation of a mutation. Since mutation can occur even by a change in a single base, a single nucleated pair can serve as a muton. Then complon, complon is a unit of allylic complementation. It is almost similar to a cistron. Complementation is the process in which two mutant alleles together perform a function which cannot be carried out by any one of them alone. Then replicon. Replicon is the unit of replication that governs the synthesis of a small stretch of DNA. It can be monocystronic or polycystronic. In eukaryotes, the whole circular DNA represents a single replicon. But in eukaryotes, a single DNA may contain many hundred replicons. Then transcriptin. Transcriptin is the unit of transcription and it governs the synthesis of an RNA molecule. It is usually monocystronic in eukaryotes but polycystronic in prokaryotes. Which one? Transcriptone. Transcription is the, transcriptone is the unit of transcription and it governs the synthesis of an RNA molecule. It is usually monocystronic in eukaryotes but polycystronic in prokaryotes. Next major topic include functional concept of gene. The search for the physical nature of the gene and the mode of its transmission or inheritance is always accompanied by an inquiry into the functional aspects of the gene. In 1902, Archibald Gadot, Gadot discovered that some inborn human metabolic errors are the direct res result of the absence of certain enzymes. This discovery gave some hints about the possible relation between genes and enzymes or proteins. At the time of Jarrod, Mendelian inheritance was not fully understood and so the significance of this discovery was not fully realized until George Badel and Edward Tatum advanced one gene, one enzyme hypothesis of gene function in 1941. In 1911, T.H. Morrigan revealed that genes are located on chromosomes and are physically linked together. Studies on the eye colors of Drosophila by Boris Epruzzi and George Badel revealed a link between mutations and enzyme deficiencies. This link was later on detected by Badel and Tatum based on their studies on Neurospora. They proved that specific gene mutations result either in the non-production of certain enzymes or the production of defective enzymes, which in turn leads to the disruption of specific metabolic reactions. On the basis of these results, they proposed the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis, which holds that a particular gene governs the production of a specific enzyme, which in turn mediates a specific biochemical reaction. This has later on modified as the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis, 
when it was discovered that some enzymes are formed of several polypeptides and the production of each polypeptide is governed by a specific gene. This is a concept of gene acquired a special functional dimension by holding that gene is a biological unit which governs the production of a specific polypeptide. The elucidation of the molecular organization of DNA by Watson and Crick, the cracking and deciphering of the genetic code and the revelation of functional roles of RNAs are completely exposed, the link between genes and gene products. Accordingly, a gene is considered to serve as a template for the synthesis of informational mRNA, which in turn gets translated or decoded to synthesize specific polypeptide gene. Molecular structure of a typical eukaryotic gene. A gene is visualized as a nucleotide sequence in DNA capable of undergoing transcription. The particular base of this continuous sequence from which transcription begins is known as zero point or initiation site. So, the particular base of its constituent sequences from which transcription begins is known as zero point or initiation site. A complete eukaryotic gene has three main regions, namely the first non-coding region at the 5 prime end and the second non-coding region at the 3 prime end and the coding or cystronic region in between these two. The coding region can code for amino acids whereas the non-coding regions cannot. So coding sequences are transcribed and translated or expressed but non-coding sequences are only transcribed and never translated or expressed. Non-coding sequences are only transcribed but never translated or expressed. The first non-coding region has three parts namely leader, promoter and acceptor regions. Which are the three regions of non-coding region as the first non-coding region which is located at the 5 prime and we know that. That has three parts namely leader part, promoter part and acceptor region. The second non-coding region has a single part called trailer region. Leader region or leader sequence by Bronson in 1973 is a region at the 5 prime end of DNA and mRNA. It is only transcribed but not translated because this portion is a non-coding portion. We know that. It may contain regulatory signals. Sorry. The coding region can code for amino acids, but the first non-coding region has three parts, namely leader, promoter and acceptor regions. The second non-coding region has a single part called trailer region. When we look at the structure of eukaryotic gene, first five prime and contain a non-coding region, then a coding region or a cystronic region. After that, another non-coding region at the 3 prime end. The first portion of the first non-coding region contain regions like leader, promoter and acceptor regions. But the last part or the non-coding region at the 3 prime end contain only trailer region. So these non-coding regions located at the 3 prime and 5 prime end are not at all you know take part in translation they just get transcribed but no translation will happen as these portions are non-coding they won't be producing proteins but the systronic portion will definitely producing proteins then not always some exceptions are always there in any scientific topic and those portions are you know always open for research leader region or leader sequence is a region at the 5 prime end of dna and mrna it is only transcribed but not translated as we mentioned earlier it may contain regulatory signals for determining the rate of genetic transcription and also for selecting the initiator codon AUG in genetic translation. 
it may contain regulatory signals for determining the rate of genetic transcription and also for selecting the initiator code on EUG in genetic translation. Then promoter is a DNA sequence usually lying between the acceptor and leader regions. It directs the binding of RNA polymerase to initiate transcription. In eukaryotes, promoter contains three sets of highly conserved base sequences, namely enhancer sequence, tata box sequence, or Hognes Goldberg box, and CAT box sequence. These are promoters. CAT and tata, T A T A, pronounced as tata box. These are promoters. Enhancer sequence enhances the transcription activity of a gene. In most cases, it consists of A, T, 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 G, C, A, T sequence. Then, data box is believed to provide the precise binding site for mRNA polymerase 2 to initiate transcription. C, A, A, T box is believed to serve as a recognition site for RNA polymerase 2. If it undergoes mutation, the enzyme will not recognize it. In that case, RNA polymerase promoter binding will not take place and the mutant gene will not be transcribed. Acceptor region also is a conserved base sequence. It serves as a binding site of regulations, regulators which influence the genetic transcription. In prokaryotes, there is an operator region in place of the eukaryotic acceptor region. Cystronic region in eukaryotes is interrupted or discontinuous. It consists of regulate regularly alternating coding or and non-coding sequences. The coding sequence is called exons and the non-coding ones are called introns. Prokaryotic cystrons are uninterrupted, formed of a continuous series of exons intervening, introns being absent. The first exon of the cystronic region serves as the initiated size where actual transcription begins. Trailer region is non-translatable segment at the three prime end of the DNA and the mRNA. Next is about gene clusters along with some eukaryotic multi-gene families which will be explained with the help of next video.